shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose upon the earth shall be loosed in the, in the heavens. Do you know that when you are declaring, let thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, come on, that earth could be you, that earth could be your family, that earth, come on, whatever it is that affects your world, or maybe it doesn't affect your world, but it is the world, this earth, it's a form of binding up the enemy. Thy kingdom come, when God's kingdom comes, the devil's kingdom cannot operate. It is rendered powerless. It experienced conflict. And how many know God's kingdom always overcomes? So when you're declaring, let thy kingdom come, let thy will be done on earth in my life as it is in heaven, you are saying, devil, you are off limits. I'm not part of your kingdom. You cannot and will not put that upon me or in my life. It's rendered powerless. But also it's loosing. When you are saying, let thy kingdom come, you are giving permission to the hosts. You are giving permission to the angels. You're giving permission to God himself to activate the rights and the privileges of your covenant. Are you here? And so we were singing. What was the next song we were singing? Okay, Lord, I lift up my eyes. Think about this. If Jesus in the garden, and he's literally sweating great, drops of blood because of the cup that was filled with the iniquity of us all and he said father if possible let this cup pass from me but then he said exactly what we are declaring nevertheless not my will but your will in other words let thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth for the sake of the people for the sake of the children and generations to come you see that's why when you're saying this don't stand there and act like it means nothing or you don't participate oh that's just a phrase do you really understand what you are activating and releasing over your life over your life come on that are watching over the nation over the nations and if Jesus when he raised Lazarus from the dead you know how he did it well he cried out Lazarus comes forth well there was something that happened before he cried out you know what it was the Bible says Jesus lifted his eyes he said father you hear me always if Jesus just by lifting his eyes could raise a dead man some of you when we're saying Lord we lift up our eyes you're still looking down you're still uninterested when are we gonna get it folks we put more energy in the wrong things more attention to the wrong things but when it comes to God we check out and yet we don't realize that God is trying to invade a moment so that he can activate something out of the heavens for your benefit and for the earth and it requires our participation so if, if Lazarus could be raised by lifting of an eyes of a man God Jesus fully God fully man what what can be lifted in your life in your family, your finances, your body, this earth, by lifting up your eyes. So I want us to sing it and declare it again. First, we're going to declare, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And let me say this. Maybe that earth is you in the world that you live in. Don't just stand there. You, everybody needs to be standing unless you can't stand. Or if you do sit, you need to be lifting up your hands like you are a antenna, a transistor. You are, you, are, you are absolutely reaching for the power of God. And as you put your antenna up, come on. You know why I lift up my hands? I'm reaching for God knowing that when I do, and as I'm surrendering my heart, I'm absolutely attracting power to my life to invade it. Come on. Come on. A woman with issue of blood. 12 years. Nobody could help her. She didn't get her miracle in 2022 by hoping so, standing back and spectating. No, she activated her spiritual antenna. And the Bible says she reached into the press. She activated that touch. And what happened? Her issues stopped. Come on. Some of you, your problems are about to go bye-bye. You're not going to carry them in 2022. But it's time to reach God now. It's time to lift up. Come on, let's prophesy this over our life. 
Let's prophesy this over America. Ready? Let your kingdom let, come. Let kingdom let come. Your will be done. Come on, those of you that are watching. On earth as it is in heaven. Lord, over America. On earth as it is in heaven. Over Canada. Let your kingdom come. Over let your will be done. Africa, Zimbabwe. On earth as it is in over heaven. Over Russia and China. On earth as it is over in Australia. heaven. Over Australia. South America, Central America. Oh, over Mexico, we declare it. On earth as it is in over heaven. North America, On the Great. As it is in over United King Ireland. Let your kingdom come, let your will over be Greenland, done. Europe, On earth as it is in India, heaven. and the islands of the sea. We declare as one sound. Let your kingdom, kingdom come, let your will be done. In other words, devil, you are bound because God's kingdom has come and it's being activated to release heaven's agenda. Therefore, there's a loosening of the host. The hand of God. Yes, we're given permission. Let your kingdom come. Stop armies of nations who want to attack. Restrain the spirits of war. Restrain bloodshed. As we say, let thy kingdom come now. Come on. Something shifts. It shifts over the earth. As it's time for you to act, God. Yes. Be activated. Your hand. He to me very clearly. He said, Hank, because of the harshness of how the decade has started and the things that people have been through, I am going to really bless the people. And he said, I'm going to make 2022 really about them and rewarding them. And, and some people will say, well, but no, 2022 should not be about you. It should be about him. Well, no, our, our job, not even a job, it's our honor is to make it always about God first. But he has so understood and understands what we've gone through and the harshness and the mandates and the different things that they're trying to get away with that God simply wants to show that he is the God that does exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we could ask or think. Therefore, he's going to reward us in a great way if we will position ourselves to understand. And so when he said this to me, he said, 2022 shall be 2020 you. I will make it about them. I will reward them. I will cause them to have spoil. How I many you know what spoil is? Spoil is you're spoiled. <laughs> but spoil is also something that comes to you as a result of going through battle. And so God told us that 2021 would be 2021, W-O-N. It would be the year of victory. And some people were saying, well, I haven't seen any victory, Pastor Hank. Well, you know what? Rather than rehearse your, 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 your trouble, rehearse the negative, I want you to honestly look. And you will find that there are more things that you can rejoice about and say, it has really been a year of victory. This morning as I was praying and taking communion with Pastor Brenda, and something that I told Brenda, I said, uh, you know what? I really want to do until I feel to stop. We're going to receive communion together every day. And I feel it because I feel like it's, it's saying something not only to myself, but it's also saying something to God. It's putting him in remembrance of, Lord, you said this. You said this would be about uh, us. You said that you would reward us. And so here is proof you paid for it through the blood of your son. Jesus Christ. Therefore, this is what you said, and I put you in remembrance. But also, it is, it is in the face of the devil. The Bible says in Psalm 23 that God prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And when you take that cup, and when you take that bread that he said, this is my body, doesn't represent, he said, this is my body, this is my blood, and you take it, you are literally before the face of every devil and every enemy, you are saying, I am off limits, and I want to remind you that I belong to God and he has blessed me in your face it's like scud missiles bam and so I was you know telling God today with Brenda as we were receiving Holy Communion I, I, I was saying God you know this has been kind of a disappointing year and I was you know letting God I just needed to get it out I said Lord you know there's some things that I'm disappointed about and I went over a short list 
of some things that really disappointed me this year. And I wanted God to know that this is the way I felt and that I'm ready to move on. But then, as we were taking communion, we began to rehearse the things that God has done this year. And I'm telling you, it outweighed the very few things that I could complain about, which we really shouldn't. But you have to get your perspective right. And so as I was seeking God about this year, about it being year 2022, about you, come on. How many of you have gone through some stuff? Raise your hand. Those of you that are watching, raise your hand. You have to understand, I said, Lord, give me a scripture that can somehow let the people see what you are trying to say to us so that we understand with clarity in your word that backs up. So he gave me Mark chapter 10 about a week later as I was reading the scripture. I came across the story. I want you to look at verse 46. And it says, it's about blind Bartimaeus. And so they came to Jericho, and as he, Jesus, was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a very large crowd, a beggar who was blind named Bartimaeus. Notice he was a beggar. He was a man in need. Some of you that are watching, you that are here, you have a great need. Come on, some of you have a financial need. Some of you have a marital need. You need your marriage fixed. You need your finances fixed. You need your body healed. You need your family restored. You need your job preserved, or you need a job. There's something that you are in need of, and I'm telling you, watch what happens to blind Bartimaeus because this is your example. And so there was a man named blind Bartimaeus, and notice he was blind. He was a beggar. And he was sitting by the road. Notice he was by the road. Some of you, you have been on a road of disappointment. You've been on a road of, of struggle. You've been on a road of anxiety, a road of fear. But I'm here to tell you that sometimes if you're not careful, if you choose to be on a road or a path that takes you down, for example, anxiety or fear of the future, fear of the nations, what, what is going on in the earth? What does the future hold? It'll cause you, if you're not careful, when you take your eyes off of God or off of the scripture, you will become blind like Bartimaeus. You will begin to see things according to the perspective of what the media says to you, and they're lying to you, many of them. And they're paid to do so. It's called propaganda. And so what we have to understand is blind Bartimaeus was blind on a road, but he didn't remain that way. And so no matter what road you are on, what path you're on, where it seems like you're not sure where your job's heading because they're threatening with mandates and, and different things like that, and you're like, well, golly, if I don't do this, I'm going to lose my job. And it may look like there's no hope. I'm here to tell you, blind Bartimaeus positioned himself to be on the right road that would bring a divine intervention from God. Are you ready for a divine intervention? That's what God's going to do. He's going to step in. And notice what happens. Blind Bartimaeus was on this road, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. Now listen to me. He didn't just cry out and complain. Well, you know, I'm blind. Well, you know, I've had this uh, day after day, year after year. I've got bruises on my body from knocking into things, right? I've broken my bones because I'm blind. And he, he didn't rehearse as he knew that Jesus was nearby. He didn't rehearse all of the years of his pain, of his struggle, of being blind. That's the problem with people. We get on a road, and on that road, we've got a long history that we bring to it that somehow we have to convince God. He didn't do that. When he got on the road, notice what he did. He cried out, and this was not a cry of complaining. It was not a cry of negativity. It was not a cry of trying to remind God or show God just how bad his road was and how bad his season was. His cry was a cry that every one of us needs to get a hold of. And literally it's the cry, I'm going to say it this way, that we have to get corrected. Too many of us are crying about the administration. We're crying about what happened. We should never forget November 3rd. That's not my point. My point is complaining does not get us anywhere. Have you ever heard the saying, God keeps score? Literally in the Old Testament... God said, the people of Israel have complained and murmured against me these ten times. God was keeping score. And the reason why he was keeping score is because he hates complaining. So this cry that blind Bartimaeus on this road was not a cry of complaining. Notice what he was crying. He cried out. He remembered. He heard about Jesus. You know what he heard? He heard that this man, Jesus, is not just a prophet. He's not just a teacher. You know what we have as Christians who have accepted Jesus Christ? He is not, as some religions say, just a prophet. He is the only one.
John who identified himself as God. No one else has ever identified themselves as God. Not Hare Krishna, not Muhammad, not Buddha. Jesus is the only one that said, I am the son of the living God. And this man, blind Bartimaeus, heard that Jesus healed the sick and opened blind eyes. And so he positioned himself for the supernatural intervention of God himself. But notice what his cry was. You know why he knew? That Jesus was the God of the miraculous. Fully God and fully man. Jesus, the Son of God, came as a man, as a babe lying in swaddling clothes in a manger only to die for the sins of all mankind. And so he heard about Jesus, and notice what he did. He cried out, watch this. Jesus, thou son of David. Why would he cry out, Jesus, thou son of David? Because he realized what he heard about Jesus. Jesus was operating by covenant in the earth. And he was operating by a covenant that God had made with Abraham and Isaac, and Jacob. And this covenant was a covenant that God would back up what he said. Are you here? Yeah. And so he was crying out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Now, notice he was connecting David to mercy. How many remember the story of, of David and Bathsheba, where David committed adultery with Bathsheba while he was supposed to go to war? The Bible says in 2 Second, uh, Second, uh, Samuel, I believe it is, or 2 Kings 11, that it was the time when kings go forth into battle. David stayed back and began to observe a woman washing herself, and her name was Bathsheba. And so he called for another man's wife, and, and he committed adultery with her, and she got pregnant. And remember, the, the first child that she had died, and, and David was so upset that the child died that he fasted, he prayed, and, and God did not for some reason answer. And David was so distressed because not only he knew that what he did was sin. And let me tell you something. There is no joy ever, ever in adultery. King David could teach you that. And his adultery, he felt so bad. Not only that, but he felt bad the very fact that he bore a child and now that child died. And nothing he did praying or fasting or calling out waiting on God was enough but here's the thing after three days finally God says to him David I'm going to raise up a child that shall be an heir to the throne and this child that I raise up I shall establish a covenant of sure mercy for a thousand generations you know what I love about God even though we may mess up if we get our heart right and we truly repent, there is mercy, man. There is forgiveness. There's a new start. And God said, David, I'm going to give you a covenant of sure mercy that's going to last for a thousand generations. And somehow, when he was crying out, Jesus, thou son of David, if you gave mercy to David, who didn't even deserve it, and established the covenant with him, how much more I cry out to you, have mercy upon me. Sometimes that's the greatest cry that you can cry. God, have mercy upon me. If you remembered others, you will remember me. Yeah. Mercy is I don't deserve it. And so he cried out. And notice there's always people in the crowd. There's always those in the crowd that always want to tell you to shut up. They always want to silence you. We watch them try to do this when they put a mask over our mouths and try to shut down our churches. But yet we have to understand that there was something on the inside and it has to be the spirit of what we carry into 2022. You know what it is? I am not going to be silent. Right. I'm not going to be forced to do anything against my constitutional right or my God-given right, especially when it comes to my body. And so he was in a place where they told him sternly, be quiet, shut up. You're too loud. And he kept crying out all the more, Jesus Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And let me tell you something. You know what gets God's attention? Look here. Verse 49, Jesus stops in his tracks. Because it's not a cry of complaining that gets his attention. Well, the government is this. This administration is this. They stole this. It's true. Listen, there comes a point where God knows all of that. We know all of that. We just need the courts to know it. Because they get paid off, they get threatened. Or they're part of it. 
Here's the point. What we need to say is, God, you have not taken your hand off of America. Lord, have mercy upon the United States. Establish your righteousness and your justice. Those who have cooperated with evil, God, bring them. Bring them to light. Expose them. And let your justice reign in the earth and in this nation. Those are the cries that move. There's a lot. Brenda doesn't do it. She won't. She's like, no, I don't do that. I'm like, Brenda, come on. She only cleans up fish stuff, which I won't touch that stuff. Put your hand in nasty old fish water. It's like putting your hand in a toilet. So there you go, Brenda. We're even now. But, but, but Jesus, he stops and he calls him, come over here. And so he comes over and people are saying, take courage, stand up. And notice what he does in verse 50. And this is so important. Not only to get our cry right, not a cry of complaining, not a cry of, oh, this and that. It's got to be a cry, thou son of David, have mercy upon us. God, you established a covenant with those who dedicated this nation to you. And we are not leaving you alone until you shine light in the darkness. Are you here? That's the kind of cry. If it's your body, Lord, Jesus already healed me of sickness and disease. Because the Bible says, by your stripes we were healed. In other words, it already happened. This is illegal. Get off of my body. You can speak that way. It has to obey. You're going to cause Jesus to stop in his tracks, man. But notice, he threw off his cloak. Now, there was a certain cloak that blind Bartimaeus wore that identified him not only as a beggar, but as a blind man. Do you know he didn't carry that cloak? He didn't carry his problems. He didn't carry his harshness, the sternness of, 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 the, of the former season with him. He, he, as soon as he realized he got Jesus' attention, he cried out, and now God was poised to respond. He's like, bye, and he couldn't even see. It was kind of his security blanket like Linus. Some of us have our little security blankets. We love to talk about our problems. My aching foot. My mother-in-law. Not mine. Hi, Mom. How you doing? I love you. I think, you're, I think you're totally terrific. I think you're great. I think you're terrific. I think you're huge. I think you're awesome. Okay, anyway, Mom. So anyway, so you just have to clarify that. There's in-laws and then there's outlaws. I don't have an outlaw. I have a great mother. I think you're wonderful. Anyway, so, you know, people think all kinds of stuff, you know, like, well. But here's the point. Some people, they have their security blanket and they have all their little problems that they just got to hold on to. If you are going to literally make it into 2022 with a different mindset and outcome, some of you, you what you need to do? On the night before the clock hits, what is it, 12? And that other clock in New York City drops down or whatever they do. You need to open up your door at your house, walk through it, have a conversation with yourself and with 2021. And yeah, how many of you ever had a conversation with the year? All right, listen here, 2021. You stunk. I didn't like you. I had disappointments. You made me mad. Yeah. Come on, some of you need to be like Rocky was. Remember when Mr. T showed up? Hey, my boy. Was he real man? I show you real man. Here's my boy, just like you with 2021. Oh, yeah. Well, you are is a big mouth, you know. I mean, who do you think you are, you know? I mean, you thought that I thought that you thought that I thought, you know. And he was ready to fight the dude right there. That's it, man. That's how you got to treat 2021. Oh, yeah? You think you can depress me? Well, you ain't nothing. You ain't nothing, 2021. You know? You got to have that kind of mentality. You think you're going to do that to me in 2021? Right. Go for it. Right? Have it out. Let it all out. And then you turn around, open the door back up, say bye 2021, and you walk in in a whole new year. Don't take your cloak with you. If not, you're going to stay blind, miserable, poor, and naked. Right? Now notice what Jesus says. So he throws off his cloak, and Jesus says something that is about 2020 you. Notice what he says. Jesus looks at him and says, Bart, new Hank standard, what 
do you want me to do for you? I mean, I can almost imagine it kind of in like a godfather term. Jesus, yo, what do you want me to do for you? Come over here. Well, Lord, uh, I want to receive my sight. All right. It's done. <laughs> Me and the brothers will make it happen. Right? And so it happens. And that's how serious he is. That's absolutely how serious he is. He's ready to absolutely show himself strong. And notice blind Bartimaeus. Notice what he said. Jesus says, come over here. What do you want me to do for you? And the man who was blind said, I want to receive my sight. He didn't go, um, you know, it's been a hard season. And uh, I stubbed my toe being blind. And now it's broke. And it's twisted to the left and a little to the right. And I can't put my sandal on because it sticks out. Inconceivable. That's what some people do. They come up in a prayer line. They got to roll off 30 things. You know, in 1987, I had this. And then did I tell you about 1990? But in 1992, there was this thing that began to creep up in my spine. And then it began to grow worse in 1994. But by the time it got to 1997, I began to grow this unusual hair on my back. And by the time it became the new millennium, not only did it come on my back, but my head began to spin around and my eyes began to bulge out. Oh, probably around 20, uh, 2010. And then about 2014, my, my tongue began to form like a lizard. And you're just sitting here going, Lord, how do you fix that? And then God speaks, son, two words. Speak, Lord. Come out. And then that hair growing, lizard looking, head spinning, eye bulging demon coming out in other words <laughs> have you ever met somebody for the first time thank god brenda you were not like this when we dated but have you ever met somebody where they just give you too much detail yeah. i would date you but you need to understand the reason why i can't date you is because i don't trust the man and because I don't trust the man, all the other men that I've been with have taken advantage of me. And they give you a long list. You're like, oh, okay. Right? Too much information. Have you ever been around people? Too much information. Too much information. Too much information. Too you have somebody in church. How are you? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. I'm like, no, I'm not. I wish I would not. Let's take this back. you ever been there before? <laughs> When it comes to Jesus, you don't need to give him so much information like you're trying to convince him. But here's what I would say to you. Blind Bartimaeus knew exactly what he needed and what he wanted. He said, Lord, I just want to receive my sight. Now, if God is saying 2022 is about you, he's not saying it's restricted to one thing. He's literally saying, just be specific, be precise. And, and, and put some things on the list. Notice, what do you want me to do? There's some things that you need to say, God, only you can do. You know what I'm doing? I want to build a building debt free. That's on my list. Okay? Are you listening? So, the Bible says also in Philippians chapter 4, it, how many of you ever quoted this? Make your request, Pastor Brenda taught us, make your request known to God. Notice his request. He didn't say, make your request one and only and that's all you get for a year. One request. Anything above that, we'll charge you for. No, heaven isn't like that. It says request, plural. In other words, and, and, and in one translation, it literally means lists. Let your lists be made known unto God. And let me encourage you, don't just wait until, you know, the night of, and it's about to strike midnight, and now you're going to come up with your list. I would not recommend doing that. I wouldn't recommend waiting till the last minute. Some of you need to get your list out. Some of you need to do it right now. Start making your list out so at least I know you're paying attention. And, and there needs to be where you are taking Jesus at a place where you are literally saying, Lord, I need you to come through. I need you to fix some stuff. Now, I want you to show this. Now, there's something that God is going to do this year. And I want you to look at Mark chapter 6. And this is very important when you look at Mark chapter 6 because it shows us what is the mindset of God. It's not just a feeling. You know, because how I many you know feelings can change? 
But if something is a spiritual force, and when that is in motion, it's hard to, to, to change that. And I say that because one of the things that God is doing in 2022 is it's going to be the year 2020 true. We're going to see some things that they thought that we weren't supposed to know we're going to find out. And there's going to be people turning on each other, exposing one another at a whole other level, things being brought to light. Come on. Some people God is just putting his finger on going, you did this, you've been doing this, and they cannot escape the constant finger of God on their chest. And either they come clean or they come clean and then they think about it when they're in prison. But the bottom line is, it's going to be 2020 true, 2020 new, new things God is wanting. When, when blind Bartimaeus threw off his cloak, he was saying, I've had it with that season. How many have had it with that season? Yeah. And he, he got himself ready for a new season. So it's 2020 true, 2020 new, but it's also, it's the year coming up that the king remembers. God remembers. Do you know when you study in, in the Bible... Where it says, and God remembered. How many know God remembered Noah? God remembered Sarah? God remembered Abraham? It's not that God has a short memory or that God forgets. God forbid. God doesn't forget. He doesn't have a short memory. When it says that God remembers something, it's not based on memory loss or memory ability. It means that God has been watching all along. And when God remembers, it means now He's been watching all along. Now that he remembers, it means he's now is the time that he's poised to act. God remembering means God action. God is moving. There's action connected to it. Well, what is, what is it that motivates God remembering? It's called compassion. It's not, compassion is not the same as mercy. Mercy is, hey, you know what, if I'm the judge and, and, and you're guilty of a crime, I say, you know what, you don't have to serve your sentence. You have been free from your crime. Compassion is if that judge who just said, you don't, it's as if you never did that crime, we're erasing it from the books, no felonies, and he gets off the bench, that judge, and puts his arms around you and says, now let me show you how to walk this life out. Compassion is action. Compassion is recognizing a need and being willing to meet that need. That's what God is looking at as he's realizing the harshness, the lies, the things that they're throwing at you, the propaganda, the agenda. Come on, the, the agenda to try to destroy humanity. That's part of what they're doing. And God is saying enough. And I am poised to act. I'm remembering. So therefore, I'm going to move. And how does God move? Through his compassion, which is a spiritual force. It's not a feeling. It's something that no devil can compete with. Look at Mark chapter 6. And when Jesus had come out, he saw a great multitude. And notice, watch. It's action. He was moved with compassion. Didn't just say he had compassion. He was moved. There was something of a spiritual force that was moving him. Because they were sheep, watch this, that did not have a shepherd. And he began to teach them. So notice what condition were they in. They were sheep that didn't have a shepherd. In other words, they were, they were helpless. How many have ever seen sheep before? Out grazing. Man, they need a shepherd. And, and I don't have time to teach all of this, but go to Psalm 23. So I've had people, I was mentioning this in the first service, that sometimes uh, people through all the years that I've been pastoring, they're like, you know, a homegoing service. They're like, well, hey, you know, I want that funeral scripture. I'm like, what, to be dead in your bodies, to be present with the Lord? Is that the one? No, we want to Psalm 23. That's a funeral scripture. Well, people read it at funerals, but it isn't a funeral scripture. Really what it is, is it's to show you your good shepherd. Jesus said in John chapter 10, he, he said, man, the devil is a thief. And he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And then he puts a real strong uh, distinction and deli, deli, what's the word? Delination? What's the word? Delination, Delin whatever that is. Delination. Between the two, something like that. You all figure it out. And he says, but I've come to give you life and life abundant, uh, more abundantly. And the reason why is because I am the good shepherd and I lay my life down for my sheep. So look at this funeral scripture. In Psalm 23. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, I used to think that that meant we didn't want him. But that's not what it means. It means, the Lord is my shepherd, I will not want for anything. He will provide 24-7, around the clock, in the future. He'll provide today. Yeah, but I'm going to lose my job. Hey, the Lord is my shepherd. And if Jesus could be moved with compassion because they were sheep without a shepherd, some of you, as you enter into 2022, say, hey, I need a job. Lord, you're my shepherd. I ain't going to want for any good thing. It's all taken care of. 
Look at verse 2. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Notice that's not suggestive. It's not Jesus up there. Uh, do you mind uh, going over here in green pastures? <laughs> ain't nothing suggestive about it. He's like, hey, sheep Bob. Sheep Matthew. Sheep Tony. Sheep Paul. Get over here. I'm making you lie down in green pastures. Notice there's no suggestion. Why would he make us? Because sheep need to be led. And sheep love to wander and do their own thing. And yet a good shepherd, a good pastor will even say, hey, just sit down. Listen up. Right? But Jesus is saying, I'm going to make you lie down in green pastures because I want to make sure that you rest, you're well taken care of, and that you got greener grass over here than what you think over there. Some people think the world has so much to offer them. That's why he's making us lie down because some of us, we think the world has all the answers. And the Lord's like, no, 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 come over to my pasture, man. I got it all. He leads me beside still waters. Why? Because sometimes the waters can be rough in your life. Sometimes the waters can be rough in your home. It can be rough in your family. It can be rough. You know, the list goes on. But he, he quiets things. He steals things as your shepherd. Notice what else he does. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. And obviously, uh, keep going. We don't have time to talk about all of them. But, you know, people think it's a funeral scripture because though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Didn't say you die in it. <laughs> you walk through it. We all think as soon as we get to that, and yo, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death means I'm dead. My feet are up in the air and I've kicked the bucket. Pushing up daisies. It didn't say that. It says when things get bad, where it looks as though death and darkness and doom and gloom, and they're counting me out, and, and they've given me uh, uh, no hope, even though I walk through that kind of stuff, I'm going to live. Yeah. That's what that means. It doesn't mean, sorry, bye, put the dirt on, he's gone. I walk through it. It didn't say I lay down and breathe my last breath. I walk. And notice how you know he's not dead. I walk through. You walk in it. It's dark. It's scary. But then you go, I'm through. Oh. <laughs> I made it. Some of you, that's how you got to be in 2022. I made it. Man, it was hard. It was harsh. It was, ah, but I made it. I made it. I made it. God, give me five. We made it. Ain't it death scripture? I won't fear any evil. Putin, Russia, China, I'm not going to fear any of that. 46, for thou art with me, God, and thy rod, you old Pastor Rod Barsley, <laughs> thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me. You prepare a table before my enemies. Meatloaf. All the other good stuff. And you anoint my head with oil. And my cup runs over. There's so much meaning in that. Anyway, let's go on. You all got that about Psalm 23. No longer a funeral scripture. But if you want me to read it at your home going, we're going to read it in victory, not in, oh, let's mourn together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want you. He makes me lie down in green water. Uh, what is it? Uh, green pastures and still waters. And there I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And I'm dead and I'm about to rise. Oh, the Lord is with me. Please don't ask me to read it like that. <laughs> Pastor Doug, you do most of the home goings. Don't ever read it like that. I'm telling you, Pastor Doug, I'll get you in a headlock in a big way. He wouldn't anyway. All right. Watch this. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I just want to show you this. Notice it says it'll follow you. So you know what you have to do? Close the door on the other stuff. Say, yeah. all right, I want to hear you whistle. You know, like, come on, you knew how to do it when you were trying to get the chick to... The girl look at Come on, give me a... Yeah. That's a pretty good whistle. Let me hear it again. All right. That's what you need to do with goodness and mercy. You need to open the door, close it to 21, and then when I go like this, you whistle. You say, bye-bye, 2021, and then you... Goodness and mercy, follow me, and you shut the door. That's what you do. That's what you do. I do that to Brenda every day. I go... Come here, goodness and mercy. 
follow me. That's what I do. That's what I do. And she's like, oh, yes, dear. And she, she's just so... Okay. Right, Brenda? Sure she is. All right, now let's go on because I'm almost done. I promised God that I would not keep you past 1.30 because I've been keeping you late the last few weeks. So I'm almost done. Yes, I am. I'm almost done. All right, look here. Some, are, some people are like, oh, thank God. <laughs> but, but look here. So verse 35, which is the next scripture. By this time it was late in the day. Say late in the day. And his disciples came to him. Don't repeat that part. And his disciples came to him and said, Lord, this is a remote place and it's already late. It's already dark. Send the people away. Sounds like disciples of the Lord today. Lord, it's dark. Oh, it's too late for you to do anything with our uh, nation, our life. It's too late. Oh, come rapture bus. You're waiting for the rapture bus. You think that the trumpet's going to sound like a bus horn and it's going to take everybody out of here. He's going to, you know what I'm saying to the Lord? I'm like, Lord, mm -mm. no, no. Like the Italian dude again. Hey, Lord, let's talk. I know you, people think that you're coming, you know, but you need to stay. We got work to do. And me and Vinny. We got stuff to do. How many you know Vinny? Yeah. Remember Vinny Barbarino? Yeah. You know Mr. Codler? Yeah, that Vinny. Yeah. Some people have that kind of mentality of, I watched this movie one time on the airplane. So I don't know if it's bad in real life, but they cut out all the parts, I guess. And everybody was laughing so hard, the whole plane was moving. It was called Wild Hogs. Yeah, remember that? They all thought they were like Harley drivers, or riders. And, and, and they, they had uh, John Travolta, and he went and he blew up this this gas station accidentally, remember that? And he's so afraid, he just wants to get out of there, just like people are. They got the John Travolta spirit. You know what he says? I just want to ride. I just want to ride, you know, I just want to go to the hotel, you know, I just want to put down all the curtains, you know, I just, you know, let's just have a great time. I just want to ride, I just want to get out of here. Hey man, let's get going now, let's, let's, let's ride. That's what some people are. Jesus, I just want to ride. I just want to ride on the rapture bus. I just want out of here. I just want to pull the curtains. I just want out of here. I just want to get out of here, Lord. You know, you know, things are getting kind of tough, you know, God. And you know what I'm talking about? You know, it's just like grease lightning. You know, it's just bad. It's just wrong. You know, let's get out of here. That's, that's how some people are. It's the day after Christmas. I've had too much candy. All right, now let's go. So send the people away. Sounds like the rapture. But notice what Jesus said. No. I don't care how dark it is, and I don't care if you think that it's too late. I am moved with compassion, and I remembered, I remembered the people need a shepherd. They need action. So what am I saying? It is dark. It looks like that the day is far spent, that there's no hope for some things in our nation or our lives. But Jesus isn't saying, hey, I'm going to get you all out of here. You know what he's saying? He's rolling up his sleeves. And he's putting on the Ritz. Whatever that song is. Remember, our God is an awesome God. Putting on the Ritz. I ain't singing that. But anyway, the point is, he is literally poised to act. Now, when you look at this last scripture, are you ready? Because you want me to be done. I know. I get it. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 30. 2020 is going to also be about the year of the Lord's spoil. All right, what is it? I know. That's what I thought I said. 2022. I'm so excited about what I'm going to say. That I don't even remember what I'm going to say. But here's the point. 2022, I got it, is also about the year of the Lord's spoil. And you know what that means? God's going to spoil you, but also when you go through battles, you get a reward. It's called spoil. And so I want to share a story, and it's about David. And David was coming back with his mighty, mighty men. And you can pick it up in verse 1. They were coming back to a place called Ziglag. And notice that the, the enemy had burned this town that David lived in with fire. Look at verse 2. And as David is riding in with his mighty men, these are men who they live their lives by the sword with blood and all that running down their arms. And, 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 and you know, can you just imagine warfare by sword? I mean, that's just, oh, that's just amazing when you think about how, how you have to have a stomach. You have to have willpower. You have to have a certain warrior mentality that, that is, you're rugged, man. You're tough, right? Yep. And so 
they come into the town and they notice that the city, they could, as they're riding in, is burning with fire. They can probably smell it. There's clouds of smoke. And all of a sudden, they realize that the enemy has taken away the, the women, have taken away their wives, have taken away their children. This is a terrorist act. Right. Not airplanes, but the enemy coming in and setting everything on fire right. and kidnapping their family. Amen. Notice the state of what these people were in verse 4. They were so upset that David and the people, verse 4, they lifted up their voice. They wept. They cried until they had no more power to weep. How many of you ever had that happen? Where you, you had no more power to weep. I've had that happen to me uh, with, with, with things in my life before. Where, man, I was so upset. And, and I cried like a baby. Yeah, this man cried. And they, the people were so mad at their king, at their leader, that they spoke of killing him. And it says that the soul of all the people were grieved, not knowing where their family is, what they've done to the wives. Come on, can you imagine? What have they done to my wives? What have they done to my children? What have they done? And so David did something. Notice the last part of that verse. What did he do? What did David do? He inquired of the Lord, but he encouraged himself how? In the Lord, notice who's God. His God. People quote that often and they say, well, he encouraged himself in the Lord. No, he encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. It pur pur purposely puts his God. Because if he just encouraged himself in the Lord, then he's encouraging himself on a belief system. He's encouraging himself off of someone else's revelation. It's why when Jesus came in Matthew 16 to the disciples and he said, all right, boys, who do men say that I am? And immediately, guess who they compared Jesus to? You know what? Everybody thinks that Jesus was this nice little guy. You know, nice is where, you know, people that are nice, usually they're nice because they don't want to confront anything. They don't want to create waves. And they usually give in because they're nice. Because it's a nice thing to do. Jesus was loving. But he wasn't a conformer. And so they compared him. He said, all right, who do men say that I am? And they said, oh, first two. You ready? You are Elijah. Well, who was Elijah? He was a confronter. To the point where they were calling down fire. He said, all right, come on, you false prophets of Baal and CNN. Here's what you do. You call down fire. And then there was no fire. As they cut themselves, they prophesied, they shouted. And he said these words. He said, and you can read it in the Hebrew. He said, what? Is your God? The reason there's no fire is he'd been out uh, relieving himself. And it literally means he was going like number two. And he was mocking him. And that's what they compared Jesus to. Elijah. They also compared him. They said, well, some say you're John the Baptist. Our loving Jesus? Yeah, Mr. Confronter. John the Baptist, he was no joke. He was a confronter. You white. What did he call him? What did he accuse him of? What did he call him? Buddha vipers. Right? He was no joke, man. Repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. But then finally Jesus said, all right, who do men say I am and they all could tell by belief system hearsay but finally said alright bottom line who do you say and Peter got it by revelation you are the Christ the son of the living God and Jesus said blessed are you Simon Barjona flesh and blood hasn't revealed this but my father in heaven here's the point you can base your life off of what somebody else says about God a belief system what you read but you have to seek God for yourself and David had a relationship that when Things were on fire, looked hopeless, looked like it was all lost. David encouraged himself in the revelation of who God is in his life. Are you ready? Now, look at, look at what happens. So God tells David, you're going to pursue, you're going to overtake, and without fail, you're going to recover all. And look at verse 19 and 20 as we close. I want you to stand your feet. And there was nothing lacking to them. Pastor Doug, you can come. Neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil, nor anything that, had, that they took. David recovered all in 2022. To the point where, verse 20, watch what happens. It was so obvious, God's reward in 2022, liken it to this story, that David took all the flocks, all the herds, and he drove before those other cattle and said, Hey, this is my spoil. Some of you, you're going to name it. It's going to be so obvious devil you took this from me you're gonna pay it back now last scripture absolute last exodus 2 verses 23 and 24 we're gonna i want to talk to you about the king remembering pastor doug i'm almost done 
When the king remembers, we're going to talk about this next week, but I want to leave you with this. It means God is going to act. I won't explain the scripture. I just want you to look at it. Years passed, and the king of Egypt died. But the Israelites continued to groan under the burden of slavery. That's going to be very important. They were under, not over. God doesn't want you under. He wants you over. They cried out for help. Their cry arose to God, and watch what God did. God heard their groanings, and notice, he remembered his covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you know what God did? Verse 25, he looked down on the people of Israel and knew it was time to what? Act. What caused him to act? 